Released by Capcom in the year 2003 on the PlayStation 2, Resident Evil Dead Aim would be the fourth game in the Gun Survivor series and a main series canon installment despite the second and third Gun Survivor games being non-canon and unreleased in America. Directed by Eiro Shirahama, who also worked on Resident Evil Survivor, and written by series regular Noboru Sugimura, the game represents a large time gap for Resident Evil, both in-game and in real life. For story, the game takes place four years after the events of the first Resident Evil, in a world where Umbrella still exists but many governments are wary against it. We are also introduced to Bruce McGivern and Fong Ling, agents for the US and Chinese governments respectively, between whom the player will control usually Bruce but occasionally Fong Ling. For gameplay, Dead Aim is more of a third-person action game with perspective snapping to first person for aiming in combat. All environments are 3D and the camera now independently follows the player centered behind them. In addition, there is unlimited saving now allowed at the save points, though there is no inventory storage anymore. There is still limited ammo and health items in order to evoke some sense of survival, but despite exploration, there are no puzzles to solve. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. On September 18, 2002, an umbrella lab in Paris, France was hit with a large amount of T-Virus being stolen by a terrorist group. Two days later, one of Umbrella's luxury ocean liners, the Spencer Rain, was hijacked by the same group and contaminated with the T-Virus. The following day, the US government takes action by deploying Bruce McGivern, a member of the US STRATCOM task force, specifically assigned to counter Umbrella, in to investigate. However, he is quickly captured at gunpoint by a man named Morpheus, who isn't keen to answer questions. Before Morpheus can quickly execute him, a mysterious woman tosses a grenade their way, forcing Morpheus away and allowing Bruce to escape. As he explores, he learns Umbrella correctly suspected the terrorist culprit to be Morpheus Duval, a former employee of their R&D division of HQ, and attributes the motive to revenge. He finds a ship packed full of zombies and receives an update that Morpheus is holding the world hostage, demanding $5 billion from the US government. His call is interrupted as he notices someone behind him and the woman spying on kicks his radio away and puts him in a firm hold. Bruce identifies the lady as a member of the Chinese Security Bureau and insists they're on the same side, but she kicks him away, informing him that while they are on the same mission, they're not on the same side. She already knows his name is Bruce and he isn't surprised since both China and the US are being blackmailed in this crisis. He quickly disarms her and gets a leg up, asking for her name, but she counters him again, getting away, but dropping her name is Fong Ling. Moving up to the main VIP rooms in his search for Morpheus, Bruce is attacked by the arms of a large B.O.W., and in his shock, Fong Ling shows up to taunt him. Bruce follows her for a bit, but their activity is being watched by a gravely wounded Morpheus, who unleashes the newest model of Hunter. These elite Hunters were meant to be debuted and showcased by Umbrella, but are instead put down by the teamwork of Bruce and Fong Ling. Morpheus is mad, but on the verge of dying, he opts instead to inject himself with a strange new virus that immediately has electrifying effects. Bruce locates a showroom in which new BOWs are being shown off, including the new Elite Hunter, as well as a new Tyrant variant with better agility and powerful tentacle arms. However, this Tyrant was still in progress as it still had some defects like its heart was being exposed to its back. This Tyrant was also the prototype of a new TG virus Umbrella has been working on for the last few years. They found a unique blend of the superpowering effects of the T-Virus that when combined with the regenerative properties of the G-Virus produced a new virus that allowed its host to not only retain its intelligence but also wield bioelectric properties. However, the prototype version 091 Tyrant is again a work in progress since it cannot create electricity as expected. However, they developed a version 092 TG virus that not only can generate a high voltage current but can form a nigh invulnerable electromagnetic barrier. They need only to find a compatible human subject for it now. Bruce now notes the lights flicker around him and is surprised to find a new B.O.W. right behind him. His gun is useless against the shielding of the monster as it grabs him and talks coherently. Bruce recognizes by its speech that it's Morpheus, despite the new feminine appearance as a tyrant, and he has no choice but to run from the new successful B.O.W. experiment. He runs into Fong Ling in his desperate escape and holds the door shut as he convinces her to help him out here. She gets him out without letting the Morpheus tyrant in and Bruce is thankful. They begin warming up to each other, but she still goes off on her own. Bruce stays wary of the new threats on the ship and later finds an official report from Umbrella officially blaming Morpheus for the mansion outbreak four years ago on May 11, 1998, and terminating him for it as the scapegoat. He makes his way to the bridge where he finds Fong Ling, but more importantly sees the ship is quickly on a collision course with an island dead ahead. They both pull back to the helicopter pad on the ship, only to run into the prototype 091 tyrant there that attacked Bruce earlier. Bruce offers to hold this monster off while Fong Ling goes after Morpheus, and he succeeds in defeating the failed prototype. However, with no time left, he jumps overboard and escapes the explosion of the Spencer Rain as it strikes the island at full speed. Seeing the ocean liner thoroughly destroyed, Bruce sees this island was not only once a port that has long been abandoned, but one that was also owned by Umbrella coincidentally. Seeing sparks of electricity, Bruce hurries to see evidence of Morpheus still alive, and sticking to the mission, he follows his trail into some waterways. 
He soon learns this is a waste disposal facility that is actually used to dispose of failed BOW experiments. Ironically, some of the aquatic BOWs still persisted and eventually overran the facility. He also learns this destination is less of a coincidence as it was once supervised by Morpheus himself in the past, and he let this BOW accident happen. Navigating the waterways filled with a BOW called the Nautilus that spawns torpedo-like children, Bruce finds a radio that is still alive. He contacts his operator, who lets him know that Morpheus threatened to launch missiles filled with a T-virus at major cities around the world, and the Chinese surrendered to his ransom demands. Bruce is concerned with what that means for Fong Ling, but his operator assures him the American government refuses to negotiate with terrorists. That being said, they really need him to deal with Morpheus now. Meanwhile, Fong Ling has survived the cruiser crash and is also down in the waterways, but is now dodging an enormous BOW called Pluto, also lumbering down here. She makes her way topside before the open sky, where she's surprised to find a laser beam from the sky converge on her precise position and fire. Bruce is just in time, rushing in and knocking her aside to save her life, as it turns out the Chinese not only have an orbital laser, but one with surgical accuracy. Bruce figures there must be some way to tracking Fong Ling and realizes there's a tracker chip under the tattoo her government gave her. Cutting it out of her and crushing it, he saves her life, but it's apparent her government is disavowed her. He asks her what she wants to do now, and Fong Ling explains that she'll continue her mission, as there is no guarantee Morpheus will uphold his end of the bargain. As Bruce explores on, he finds more tales of experiments, like a more frog-like subspecies of hunter called a glimmer, and the origins of Pluto as a heavily experimented upon condemned criminal to codenamed Alpha. In fact, he runs into Pluto in the cargo hold, but the huge target is no match for him. He then finds the missiles Morpheus was threatening to launch at the same time as running into Fong Ling, but Morpheus jumps aboard their lift and sabotages it. Bruce hits the brakes long enough to get Fong Ling to safety, but the brakes give way, hurling him down below. Staying focused on the mission, Fong Ling makes her way down to the missile silo, sees a launch sequence has already been started, but is suddenly ambushed and knocked out by Morpheus. Bruce wakes up after his lift crashes and staggers out, finding this entire underwater biosphere was built secretly under Umbrella's nose by Morpheus' crew, but ironically, they fall into the outbreak. He then fights past new BOWs to discover an experimental prototype particle rifle meant to eliminate any T or G virus threat. He also reads Morpheus' personal journal, talking about his plans to create a kingdom based in Africa and destroy the world in order to preserve beauty. He then sees Morpheus and Fong Ling on a security monitor and makes a personal decision to save Fong Ling. As he steps in to confront Morpheus, he's taunted for choosing the girl over the mission, but the energy rifle proves effective in breaking the Morpheus Tyrant's shield. Despite its enhanced agility and ability to fire electricity, the Morpheus Tyrant falls to Bruce's bravado and sharpshooting. He hurries over to Fong Ling, who chastises him for ignoring the missiles, but he doesn't regret his choice. An alarm informs them they now have 10 minutes until the launch of the missiles, so they hustle while not noticing Morpheus is not only alive, but mutating again. As Fong Ling navigates Bruce through the maze-like corridors, he finds himself face to face with the new uncontrolled monstrous growth of the Morpheus Tyrant, now void of all former intelligence. After repelling the abomination, Bruce puts one last bullet square between the eyes of the terrorist scapegoat of Umbrella, rupturing the monster. The Tyrant begins swelling and expanding rapidly, causing the charged electricity within it to explode, destroying the BOW, the biosphere, and the missiles all at the same time. As the game ends, we see Bruce and Fong Ling have survived through an escape pod and fire off a signal flare. Bruce now asks Fong Ling to come with him to the United States, since the Chinese think she's dead anyway. At first she thinks to go back home, but she reconsiders, embracing Bruce and kissing him as US Stratcom Rescue flies in. Resident Evil Dead Aim has enjoyed the success of selling over 350,000 copies worldwide.